Welcome back to Jay Smokehouse and the History of Cannabis series, Marijuana in the Victorian Period and the 1800s. In 1798, Napoleon Bonaparte invades Egypt. He also brings a scientific team with him, and this is actually where they discover the Rosetta Stone. But they also bring marijuana back to France from Egypt in 1799. They bring marijuana back to investigate the pain-relieving and sedative effects of marijuana. They also mention that the Egyptians smoke the seed of the marijuana and make a beverage out of it. This is also where New West medicine really starts to accept cannabis. Then in 1839, William O'Shaughnessy, a British army surgeon who spent time in India, he was the first to conduct clinical trials of cannabis preparations. He did so by giving extracts and tinctures of cannabis. He presented many concise case studies of patients suffering from rheumatism, hydrophobia, cholera, and even tetanus. One in particular is of a 40-day-old baby who is suffering from convulsions. He writes about how this baby was on the brink of death, but he administers cannabis, and he states that just after a couple of days of administering cannabis, the baby went from the brink of death to, and I quote, the enjoyment of robust health. And by the Victorian period, around 1842, cannabis is really widely used for many ailments. One in particular is menstrual cramps. Now, the reason I say this is that Queen Victoria's personal physician, Sir Robert Russell, he writes extensively about how great cannabis is as a medicine, and in particular, how great it is for menstrual cramps. Because of this, many believe that Queen Victoria possibly used cannabis. However, there is no actual evidence that she did so. And in 1841, I've read that Abraham Lincoln was supposed to have visited Mary Todd's family's hemp plantation. This plantation was supposed to have been about 550 acres of hemp. But I don't really want to go into this much as I haven't really found much on it. And then in 1850, cannabis makes it into the pharmacopoeia in America. This was really the standard for medicine in America. Now I'm going to go ahead and list off some of the ailments that the pharmacopoeia says that cannabis can treat. Neuralgia, tetanus, typhus, cholera, rabies, dysentery, alcoholism, opiate addiction, leprosy, incontinence, convulsive disorders, and that's just to name a few. What really boggles my mind is how much progress that cannabis made all throughout history. And then just abruptly in the 20th century, it just gets prohibition placed on it all over the place. It really doesn't even make much sense. Now let's go ahead and review. Number one, Napoleon Bonaparte invades Egypt and brings marijuana back to France. Number two, in 1839, William O'Shaughnessy, the British Army surgeon, conducts the first clinical trials of cannabis preparations. Number three, in 1842, in the Victorian period, Queen Victoria might have used cannabis for menstrual cramps. Number four, it's possible that Abraham Lincoln in 1841 visited Mary Todd on her hemp plantation. Number five, in 1850, cannabis makes it into the pharmacopoeia in America. Now, if you enjoyed this video or find it as intriguing as I do, please leave a like and a comment. Let me know what you think. And also, please don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell button if you'd like to stay up to date with videos coming out in the future. And now, as always, Jay is going to go smoke a Jay.